are like triple distributions, right? Or, or I'm not sure. So that yes and no. It's a different. I'm not sure. I don't think it's weird. Installation <laughs> profiles are um, it, it's a wizard you go through while you install it for the first time. A distribution is more like a uh, uh, it's a zip file or a tarball with your code base and a database dump, and you import that database kind of as a, as a site template. Um, it's that 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 practice is a little bit frowned upon because there might be problems in the database. It's not actually a fresh install. Um, but I think to each his own. But tonight we're talking about installation programs. Yes. Okay. So basically, we're going to talk about the installation profile as a way of managing everything in code. Okay. So we're going to try and take it slow and easy. Um, but we're going to cover a lot of ground and, and look at some code and stuff. So um, we'll try to keep everybody together on this. Um, I wanted to apply the same standard process of software development in Drupal web apps that I've always used, you know, despite it doesn't matter what I'm working with, any framework. Um, the question is, we know as Drupal site builders or designers or anybody that, that um, you know, uh, kill the webmaster uh, was was the idea, and that we are not doing websites. We are doing web applications that are dynamic sites and have a database and have all the characteristics of any kind of software development, right? So, in my book um, that I wrote, um, it's it's not a shameless plug because the book's obsolete. But, you know, uh, but it, but I did in you know for for its time. Uh, I, I propose using an agile approach to organizing the development team. So, it, you know, you cannot do it alone. You have to make a team. Um, and you have to use a process. Uh, a standard methodology for candidate architecture adoption, whatever that means, version control and issue tracking, and some kind of specified deployment method so that, you know, it's, uh, you have a whole process to go by. What are, what are we saying here, basically? Um, first of all, um, an agile approach means you have a definition of the roles of which users are going to interact with the software application, in this case the website application. Um, you create a backlog of user stories, just like you would in any uh, application. You iterate over the backlog in sprints. Uh, you have to have acceptance test driven development, which means that um, you know, it's not the old story of the client coming around two months later and saying, that's not what I want, or, you know, or where's my website, or whatever. Or even, you know, the developer saying, hey, I, I, it's all done, it's ready. Who's, which, uh, who do I deliver this to? What, you know, do you have a hosting? Or, you know, that kind of thing. The, the scope is supposed to be decided before. And there's supposed to be a gradual approximation to everything so nobody has any surprises. And the idea is that the clients write the acceptance test. Because in the Agile approach, this is not a talk on Agile, but it's, it's basically the idea is that uh, the client will write the acceptance test and realize what the client wants while they're actually objectivizing this by writing it down and then test it and it's actually tied to the code that's being written. So we just, you know, we try to get the daily involvement of the client. So... Um, we do have some diagrams on this where we can see, you know, where you get the, the, the business model and then you get the requirements backlog and then the features and so on and so forth. But uh, if you look at legacy.projectflowandtracker.com, you'll see what I'm talking about. No, you know, I don't want to go into detail on that right now. So in the book, I propose using an agile approach. And um, I also propose using a standard methodology for the for finding a candidate architecture. So um, this is, you know, in the software process, you've got the requirements, you've done a feasibility, you know, is this capable of being done? And so you, you have to have in your head, uh, you know, you can't make up the architecture as you go along. What is architecture in Drupal? Well, it was already announced, the architecture class, okay, the course. So, okay, CCK and view. Uh, basically. Also, it's what kind of other contributed modules do I need? Given the feasibility, do uh, a GWiz module, 
is it really part of, is it going to ruin the, you know, is it going to be possible to actually do it with this? You know, is the, is the module I want to use really solid? Uh, what custom modules do I have to do? So the architecture of the site um, will become clear if you choose a, a backlog uh, in using the Agile approach with a heavy architecture impact, user stories done first, uh, also the client will want some things done first, so, you know, it's a bit of a battle, but the idea is to come out the first um, sprint or two with a candidate architecture. And this will be uh, defined in terms of um, how am I going to translate the business objects of each user story as I implement them into uh, entities or content types, if you will, uh, in Drupal, um, the listings of data, the queries, uh, how is this going to be done with views? So we get a, a whole constellation of stuff which should be prototyped you know, to the cloud. So all of this, you, you're busy doing this, right? So where's the code? It's all mixed in with the content. Sucks. Big time. Because I can't uh, use any practices that I've learned in the development of software with, with uh, you know, it's all mixed in. So, you know, the main idea is to solve this problem, okay? In any case, um, we, we have some basic uh, methodology that we're going to use, and we've got our little list of core third-party and custom modules, what base libraries. Uh, you're gonna, you know, you're going to use uh, some kind of WYSIWYG editor, blah, blah, blah. Is that going to contradict with other G uh, JavaScript stuff you're going to be doing? You know, all of this has to be decided. Then, version control and issue tracking was presented in the books I wrote. Um, uh, at the time, SVN was, the, you know, was the, the most standard thing. Today it would be Git and some kind of, so you have a central repository, you have a safe code base management with branches. So you know, you're like, you got your, your, your repository, then when you're gonna start a new sprint, you make a nice little branch and you start working on that. If everything falls apart, then you delete the branch, you go back and make another branch, then you work on that, and when everything's cool and tested, you merge it back in, okay. Which is great if you've got code, you know, but <laughs> if everything's in the database, you can. In my book, I, I didn't have any alternatives. My, my book was written in 2008, and Features was just getting started, and the installation program, the, the some aspects that we'll see in a moment were just beginning. so. I had no, no other idea than, than to put the database into the uh, version control system since SVN can handle binary files. You know, that's cool. But it's really, you know, unpleasant, isn't it? You know, like uh, if I make a modification that, uh, in the configuration of a view, uh, the views in the database, you know, with Skinner, the great theming module, even my CSS is in the database. And so, uh, I stick it in the version control, it's not very satisfactory because I lose part of the version control benefit, which is to, to, to do a diff, you know, what is the difference, you know, in this commit, let me, I wanna have, where's my change set of uh, deliverable for that uh, commit, I can't find it. So, you know, that's the problem. So, um, but still, you know, um, we want uh, commits, we want deliverables with acceptance as issues, change request management and bug tracking as a way of assigning tasks to everybody and some kind of deployment. What I said in the book is just to use SVN uh, as a deployment. Uh, um, for example, Pantheon and the Acquia development uh, uh, environments do, do actually use um, version control for deployment. Um, although Hudson is used as, as a way of marshalling all of this. So uh, the idea is, to, is to, to bring in that. So I just wanted to say that that was what you're supposed to use. So um, version control and the adoption of Drush. In my book, Drush was a module. When I wrote my book, Drush was a module. Today it's something almost, it's external, uh, can have, Find, you know, uh, functionality written by modules and added to Drush, but Drush is an independent PHP application, which is the command. Everybody here know, anybody not know what Drush is? Okay. So, um, but, you know, if I, if I had to rewrite the book, which uh, I would obviously talk a lot more about Drush and make me a sandwich. <laughs> so, 
the installation profile. It was a decent step, okay, in 2008. Uh, the problem is the pathological fusion of content and configuration in Drupal data. Everybody, it's very important to understand the problem here. Um, there was a really good article, which I'll, I'll cite in a moment, written by uh, Adrian Rousseau, who explained uh, you've got multiple problems. Apart from the problem that I've mentioned, that it sucks because you cannot use any kind of industry standard development process, it also sucks because when you have a staging site and a development site, okay, but when you have a live site that actually has content, so you know, you're going to start grabbing the database, bringing it down to the staging, updating the, the module, whatever it is, installing your stuff, testing it, and then pushing it up again, which, you know, it, it, so it's always like a, a crisis kind of situation, and it's not a, a real development process, you know. Uh, so um, that is the other thing, right? So it's a real pain. Uh, and, you know, you never really know, you know, what's going to happen until you actually, you know, and Drush helped a bit because Drush, Drush could do SQL dump and Drush can do SQL clean and you can restore a database easily. You don't have to start, you know, although it's, you know, you can do it with MySQL dump, it's not a big deal. But, you know, um, it, it's not really cool, is it? So, um, this, this article here actually um, is the article I, wanna, I wanted to mention. Uh, it's, it's really, these slides will be made available. This is the famous article written, a database is silver, code is gold. And he explains back in uh, July of 2009 how, <laughs> you know, the, the problems I'm talking about are recognized as a problem that have to be solved in Drupal. Okay, so you should read this article. It explains the workflow problem. Also, as Drupal gets complex, as the requirements for web applications become complex, um, you don't have a guy doing a site. The guy doing the site's dead. Anybody who's a guy doing a site is in crisis, okay? I've been a guy doing sites, uh, even I was working with people uh, to, as a team, because you just can't do it on your own. Why? Because the requirements are more complex, and Drupal's getting more complex. And uh, again, so, you know, you've got a workflow problem, a big workflow problem. Because apart from the problems I mentioned up to now, it's a team. The, the question is the, the team. Do you have a few people adding code? Okay, good. So, oopa. So, uh, there's another article where, um, so features and, and uh, trash make, and some, some solutions were put forward, okay? So we need everything in code. Then we can use a process. So the features module was, was the proposed silver bullet for this, okay? Um, the features module enables, I'm going to show in a moment, I think if I, I just uh, take a few moments to show, uh, we'll, we'll actually make a feature and, and show it. Um, so, but the, the features module enables the capture and management of features in Drupal. A feature is a collection of Drupal entities which taken together satisfy a certain use case. So this is, the silver bullet, um, you know, features provide a user interface and an API for taking different site building components from modules with exportables, in other words, the ones that use the C tools exportables, like, you know, what, everybody know what an exportable is. When you export uh, a CCK, uh, well, in Drupal 6, you export um, a, an entity and it comes out cold, so you export to code. Views can export to code. Uh, image cache can export to code. Presets, etc., uh, etc. Et Even taxonomy we find. So all kinds of stuff can, uh, but they have to write a, a handler so that they can actually be exportable. So when, when they are exportable, features began as a, as a really cool um, way of of uh, generalizing and abstracting this problem of managing exportables. It, uh, and they provide a user interface to help you do that, which we'll see in a moment. Um, a feature module, it, what it does is exports a module. And, and it's a module just like any other, and declares its components. So examples of features might be a blog, a press room, an image gallery, and so on and so forth. So, you know, immediately, 
uh, before I do the demo, I, would, I want to say what the limitation of teaching is. Okay? Um, it's not true. It's not true that a, a, a collection of Drupal entities taken together satisfies a use case. It's not a feature. It's not in software development that doesn't happen. What happens, uh, there is no one-to-one -one relationship between use cases uh, and project configuration artifact. In other words, if you have a use case, you're going to have a whole bunch of different components that are going to implement that use case, right? And if you have a component, like a module, like a, a theme or a function, something, uh, a jQuery library, uh, a menu item, uh, this is going to satisfy a number of different use cases. So there's a many, many, many to many relationship between use cases and components. Now, why is this a problem? Um, we'll discuss that in a moment with the help of some colleagues. But, uh, but uh, it's just, uh, when you have really simple use cases and you can just stick the feature, you know, everything, one of the problems is that when you assign a, an entity or content type, or you assign a view uh, to a feature, you cannot assign it to another one. This creates a dependency nightmare because I cannot put for every, for every feature what all the dependencies are. I can only put the dependency in one place. Okay, we'll come back to this in a moment. Um, and it's, it's the reason um, uh, why I, I opted for installation profile. You know? Which, and there is an ambiguity with distribution profile. And it was never really clear what it, you know, there is a difference, but it, it was, there's a real ambiguity about it. Anyway, let's uh, to go to the idea of demo here. Basically, I just installed uh, just now this, this little Drupal site. Okay, so we have um, basically we have uh, an article and ad an addition here. Okay, and if we go to, um, we can actually see three articles that were created. Okay, so what we'd like to do is, um, and also we can list, just list the articles, right? So we, we, can, uh, we can actually make a feature which will take the menu, for example, the content type and the view, and stick it all in, in one feature which will export everything into code. And then this module can then be placed under version control and can be imported into any site, right? Uh, so let's let's see how that works. Um, you just go to site building features, and um, we'll create a feature uh, articles uh, articles uh, list list and browse articles. Okay, so. Uh, Oh, we'll just put 6x10 something, and um, we won't we won't put that in. The, the idea was to have a bunch. Of, this was another problem with features because we're going to have feature centers or feature servers, and it, it, and you, what you're going to do is you're going to download a tarball. So the whole idea of feature. Now, what what would you expect here? You would expect upon making a feature for this to be exported as a module, right, in your system. Unfortunately, that's not what it does. It will make a tarball which I have to download and then upload to the site in order to have it run on, on the site. So the idea was to have like a feature server where people could ha have tarballs and then I could update my, my module automatically from the feature server, okay? This really contradicts with um, version control contradicts with Drupal.org as the center of, of the module. There's a whole lot of problems with it, but okay, it was a step forward. How, let's see how it works. And so, okay, so I, I want to do this in the, the concept of machine name. So before we actually do anything, we have to say what we want. So I want the article. Uh, it's actually asking me which fields I want. Okay. Okay, I don't want addition in this. And I want, uh, let's see, dependencies. Administration menu is a dependency? No. Bulk export? No. Color? I don't know. Con no, I guess not. <laughs> date? I'm using a date, but if I use it here, I can't use it anywhere else. 
Okay, so, uh, no, I don't know what to do. I'll just, just do the minimum. I don't know, what does this mean? So, I don't know, text? I really don't know what my dependencies are. Uh, so, they'll add it in for me since I'm down. So, I'll ask for the menus and we, we won't, oh, I see, so I can't have one. Okay, okay, so primary links, cool. I don't know what to should I put the prim if I if I it's the primary links is all or nothing here unfortunately so we don't have a granularity over each menu item because I have maybe another feature that has another menu item in the primary menu but I'm not belittling it I mean I think it's great it's just it, 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 you know it's going to pose some problems anyway um, I also want to put uh, oh so. Uh, Actually, it does. It has a level of granularity. So I can put browse articles and list articles. Cool. Okay. Then, content types, article. Wait a minute. Oh, I see. CC case of fields. Okay, good. Permissions. God knows what permissions I need. Okay, roles. I don't know. I don't need any roles. Views. Let's have a view. We'll have these two views. Very cool. So we've got all this going. And now I download the feature. Good. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to upload this this tarball is is the code of all this stuff exported. It, it was a historic major step forward for, for Drupal because it really, with, with the limitations it had, um, it, it 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 means that I can actually take this tarball and untar it somewhere, finally get to place it in the version control system and maybe deploy it to a different sites and reuse it. So I have reusable components, okay? So behind the scenes here, I'm sorry, I'm going to actually, I'm going to, I'm going to upload this thing so we can actually see it and play with it a little. So uh, here's a tarball. I'm going to actually, uh, let's see. Oh, where do I want to put it? I want to put it uh, in the feature site. I want to put it in dev. So I'll put it in, in, in the modules there. Yep. So let me see. So here I am on the site. So I think, oh, uh, I want to go to features, I want to go to there, I want to go to sites, all modules, I think there it is. Yes, articles, that tarball there is the actual tarball, okay? So I'm actually going to do... Um, the features module is there, so I'll, I'll just um, make the uh, custom features. And I guess tar uh, OK. So here it is. I have a bunch of files here, um, which, which actually uh, is that. So I guess the, the acid test would be if I delete the menu items, delete the views, delete the content types, and then install the feature, I should get it back again. So we'll go ahead and do that um, right now. So here, um, basically, because let me just show you um, uh, in, in the articles, this is the articles module that has its info, right? We can't really see that, but it's actually saying, features and menu module and text and views are dependencies and we have you know uh, the fields and the and the content type and and this is just a module just like any other module and has to be enabled so let's do our little work of destruction here and um, when we actually now go to features itself the articles feature now appears as if you know as, as a feature I can install in my system in open atrium you'll recognize features as being the blog 
and the case tracking thing and all that stuff is uh, features. So, okay, so let's go to, um, to uh, obviously I'm going to have to make my stuff again, but anyway, let's just go to uh, content types and I guess uh, edit article. Can I delete that? Yeah. Delete content type. Bad content type. Fuera. Okay. Same with uh, addition. Okay. Great. And and I guess I'll um, I don't. These are coming from a view, so I just go to the views. Uh, it's a good idea to back up the database before you do this, uh, in case you actually forget <laughs> one of the dependencies, but we don't care tonight. Um, so, okay, so let's just delete this. Bye-bye. And we'll delete this too. Okay. Interesting to see what Drupal does with the content, but just out of curiosity, morbid curiosity. Okay, we still have the, the content here, even though we deleted the, uh, the stuff. Uh, so God knows. I will just leave that alone. But we don't have the menu items. We don't have, if we go to the content types, we don't have anything, right? Okay, nothing at my sleeves. Now we go to features. And because we uploaded the, the module and put it in the module directory, so... Uh, it appears here. You you should not go, even though it will appear in, in the modules administration page, you should not enable it there. You should actually enable features here in the features page. So, um, I will click this and uh, save settings. Trundle, 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 trundle. Okay. Uh, this is something... Um, really catchy that if you say disable, it says uh, these modules are dependencies that have been disabled because the, the feature doesn't need the field group because I'm not using the field group in any of these content types. So the feature module says, if, if you, you, you don't need this, you want me to disable it? And you say, sure, go ahead. I don't have any field groups anymore in my whole system. So I'll just say um, leave enabled. It gets, it's a little too smart for its own good. So it says that the state of it is default, and we're all set. And now we actually have our browse articles, we have our view, we have our content types together. Browse feature. OK. Uh, has everybody done this? Has everybody used this? Everybody here? Um, any questions about this uh, uh, from those who have not? Is it clear what we did? OK. Now, uh, Drush. What's really cool is, let's, uh, uh, okay, what's really cool here is that we have a Drush uh, feature list. So it actually uh, shows that the article's feature is enabled and everything. What happens if I go and change a view? That is included in, in the future. Let's see what happens. So let's go in, and we go to uh, to views. Because right now, if I were using a, a version control system, I make my commit. I've got my feature. It's in. It's not in the database. I'm cool. I can use a, a proper uh, process, right? Um, now, if you look at the at this here, it says that um, I have these different views. So I'm going to go in here, uh, list articles. Uh, very good. Um, let's edit listing articles. And um, what we'll do is we'll add another field, right? So we'll say that we want to add uh, uh, the author. Okay, so we go to content. I want to add the author and the subtitle. Well, let's just add the subtitle. Add that. 
Okay. Update the view. Save the view. Okay. And now if I go to list list articles, we have, oh I hate those those labels. Let's get rid of the labels real quick. So bad label. Okay, and this one too. Uh, what happened to the label? Okay, no. okay, so did I save it? Save the view. So now, on the command line, uh, drash file list, look what it says. That the state of the feature is overridden. Okay. In other words, it's it's half in the database and half in the code. So if I now do a commit, it won't change anything because the code hasn't changed. Is that clear? I changed the view in the database. I didn't change it in the code. So what do I have to do? Recreate the feature and then download it and then upload it again. Then I can commit it. Well, for a while we had to do that, but now thanks to Trash. We can we can do this. I think we can do uh, drush drush fa uh, feature update uh, articles, and it'll ask me if I really want to do this. And and it actually changes the code. I'm all set. So I go drush uh, feature list, and it's it's enabled, and the state is cool. And if I go into features, uh, it'll show. So is everybody, is that clear what I just did? Okay, now I can make the commit. Okay, so this is the cycle for feature development. Okay, now, I don't want to go into a long thing about it, but um, we could have a short discussion, um, and maybe Oliver would like to say something about the, the, the problem where, um, the, the famous dependencies problem, there, there, is a fun, there are two funny monkey articles um, which are very funny, and they have little diagrams, monkeys. So, but apart from that, they also explain the pain that they went through in trying to use features to develop a project, a voice box that, that was for the Knight Foundation. And um, they, they wound up doing a hierarchy of features because of this dependency problem. If you include it in one, right, you, you, you can't. Including another, for example, I made a, an addition content type. I don't want to go into it right now. I don't want to spend the time exactly doing it right now. But if I if I went ahead and I made a node reference in the article to the addition, um, and so I have an additions and I can make a view that can actually list all of the articles that reference such and such an addition. Okay, then. Um, is that an addition feature, or is it? Or do I put everything in the same mod in the same feature? What it, so, what do you think, uh, Oliver? You want to say something about that? The, the problems of features and stuff like that. Well, I mean, one of the ways that we we kind of solve that some of those problems is to set up with like a, a base feature that has some of the more universal stuff that you're setting, something that like like a menu system for the whole site, and then keeping just some of the little pieces for each for each content type and the view associated with it in these little compartmentalized um, sub, sub features or whatever. But as, as Victor was mentioning, sometimes you want to make a change to, to some piece of that and you find that, that, that some of these features start becoming overlapping and interdependent and making a change to, wanting to make a change to one piece may require decoupling some dependencies, removing them and then saving out multiple features and the process can get somewhat muddled sometimes and frustrating. Yeah, I mean, the ideal thing would be to be able to make an addition or other features and that every feature could list all of its dependencies. And that way it would be, much, then it would be reusable and, yes. I mean, uh, so, so from what I'm hearing, you would say that it's uh, an approach where I've experienced with more modules or modulizing, modularizing things is a better approach? Would you suggest that, that features does that kind of the same way? Or if we're splitting it out into more features that are smaller in scope, 
are, are a better way to avoid the problem of the redundancy. Yeah, sure. Okay. I mean, there, but but there, you know, you do encounter some issues where, like, I mean, when Victor was saying, what if you want to have you want to add a new content type and you want that to have a menu in your main menu? Like, where do where do you save the menu? You can't save it in your new content type. You have to save that as part of a the base feature that exported yeah, the other features. Um, yeah. But uh, but but and I mean there are the other issues that at least I, that I have with features that some things are just not ex some of the stuff is just isn't exportable or exactly terms or how you export it. Is well, taxonomy terms that there is a, a module that actually makes taxonomy terms exportable, which which. But it's to features a, or to C tools type uh, It does have, a, you can use it with features also. Um, they, they so, any one? Is that what you're talking about? Well, I think it, 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 it puts a machine language, a, a machine name, I beg your pardon, for each taxonomy term and, um, and, and solves the problem that way. Uh, I've never used it in features, but it does exist. Um, it's in, it was in there. So, um, please read uh, later on at the end of, of, of this uh, of these slides. There's some references. And I have a bibliography here because I did an extensive investigation, and um, the two funny monkey articles and some others are, are really important to read because they'll explain. For example, those uh, having to do with the user interface. One of the things I didn't include here is if you include the strong arm module, uh, then then with strong arm, you can actually export uh, variables of the system, and it's actually a absolutely essential. I just, for the sake of simplicity, um, I didn't include it here. But the strong arm module will allow you to export variables, and there's there's where the dependency nightmare also uh, uh, occurs because you know the same variable, obviously. Because why why is it so important to get our dependencies clear in the features? What are we perfectionists? Uh, Crazy people, obsession. Look at this guy cleaning his screen. <laughs> um, okay, so it's not no. that. The problem is, the problem is, if I want to export a feature and have somebody else install it, and it doesn't have all the dependencies in it, it's incomplete. That's the problem. That's where the problem arises. So um, um, sometimes you, you get your content types, then maybe your views. And then the variables that have to do with themes, and that's a solution. OK. Um, I found, uh, in doing Project Flow Tracker, an alternative uh, solution involving um, install profiles. So I'm going to go on and discuss that. Um, and I will, sh will dissect my installation profile, which was, I think, uh, w when I wrote it, uh, the Project Flow Tracker a few months ago, I, I put it up on, on Drupal, uh, as an example of um, how far I could go with with the installation profile um, without using any features whatsoever. So let's have a look in, and see how this alternative to putting everything in code uh, works. Okay. Um, so um, if we go here and we look at this, here's the breakthrough. Um, years ago, years ago, not so much, not so long ago. The, to write an installation profile, and which was very important because that was going to be for Drupal a way of actually getting products into the hands of people, so you know, and it was going to be a way of you know one, two, three, many, you know, um, installation profiles, and it was going to be easy to write and everything. But unfortunately, the the when you have the 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 installation process when you install doesn't have. Drupal bootstrap, so you cannot use any module. And so you have to use this set of arcane installation functions that have nothing to do with Drupal core, which means you can't do Drupal things, like, like create a, a node or something. You can't do anything that you would normally be able to do. So it was really a, a good beginning, but it was very dated and very incomplete, very very difficult to use. Is that clear? You know, in other words, if if the installation process does not bootstrap Drupal, you know, you cannot do Drupal things during the installation process, right? You cannot install content types. You cannot um, um, 
um, enable exported uh, uh, presets. You know, is active. So that's a big limitation. Plus, you have to learn a whole set of functions that are only used for that. You know, so it's like a bit of a pain, right? But these guys, I, I don't know who did this. Let me let me just um, let's see. It, let's go here. History was made. The install profile API, which existed, it, it, this was the documentation, practically, this module, of um, how I can actually write an installation profile, right? And, uh, and it was a documentation, a list of functions that you could call. And then here, um, let's, uh, so it says, it said, this is not really an end user module. You'll need to be somewhat familiar with PHP, blah, blah, blah. Okay. As of July 2008, we've turned Install Profile and API into an actual module so you can depend on it in your install profiles. And as I found out, um, thanks to Views Gallery, which I studied, you can actually use it in the installation uh, function of a module also, not just in the installation of uh, a site. So, uh, so the installation API can actually be used in your own install process, in your own uh, custom module. Okay, this is big. This is big. Um, and um, we've turned install profile API into an actual module, so you can depend on it in your store. Okay, blah, blah, blah. This was huge, okay? And um, uh, so let's see here. No more arcane you know, the old thing. This means that they turned it into a module and bootstrap Drupal during the, uh, the, the process. The same, I, I forget the group of people. Anybody know here who was involved in that? Uh, uh, well, <laughs> the, yeah. the usual suspects. Okay. Uh, it was a great move. It was really a great move. Uh, yeah. So it was amazing. So um, if we go actually into um, into the actual, uh, we, we will have a look in a moment. But but there is not only the install profile API for core, but also an increasing number of contrib module support in this. So you can actually, you actually have content copy, which means, oops, you have flag, path auto, views, uh, taxonomy export is the module that uh, allows you to, to export taxonomy terms. Um, uh, I got it to work, but there is in the dev, there's a dev version that, that was. Anyway, anyway, I used it in the install program. And and um, and uh, what it did do is it made the install, but unlike views where you change the code and, and just uh, uh, and you um, review, you know what do you do you uh, the cache the cache you clear the cache and then the new views comes in, but not but I could not get a, a reversion for the taxonomy term. so it's only a one time thing to install, which is something okay. Then wiki tools, tiny MC, image cache. Image cache is important. It means you can actually do the presets and actually have them exportable in code and version them and deploy them, right? Very important. Okay. Um, so I basically, uh, uh, eating my own dog food, uh, how do I go about installing my installation profile? Um, I install Drush and Drush Make. I download my Make file. We'll just go over these steps, and then we'll actually do them, and then we'll see the result, and then we'll anal we'll, we'll go and analyze the, the actual code of, of how this is done. Um, so you download the Make file. The Make file is this. Um, it's a, it's a, a Drush Make Make file. Everybody here know what Drush Make is. 
Okay. Tell, tell us what it yeah, is. Us okay. Us. Drash make. Um, uh, first of all, the word make here comes from the, the world of software development. Uh, in C programming or any kind of programming, uh, you have the problem of not only developing your code, but compiling it and, and installing it. And the good folks, Dennis Ritchie, uh, uh, the good folks who made Unix and all this, created a lot of tools for programmers. One of the tools is Make. And Make is like a build tool where you can actually create dependencies and it has a little language. And when you, when you run a Make file, you say Make, uh, and, and if you have a file, Make file, in your directory, it will, uh, Make will execute that. And for example, if you say make compile, and then it'll compile all of the C program into a little object thing. If you say make install, it will compile everything, link everything into an executable, and install it according to the instructions in the make file. So the term make goes way back in, as a tool, okay? And um, as part of the deployment problem, what do I have to do when I build a, a site in Drupal? One of the tasks. Um, is I have to say, okay, I need to download Drupal, I need to put Drupal into this directory, um, I need to um, download a, a bunch of modules, right? And, um, and then I would like to be able to automate this. So there, there comes Drupal, uh, uh, DrashMake, which is a way of specifying your dependencies. And when you execute it, Right, uh, drash make blah, blah, blah. then all of these we'll see is actually used in a moment. Okay, um, all of these um, dependencies will actually be downloaded and, and, and placed in a directory where it's specified. So it's like a Drupal make file, a way of building Drupal. There it is. Can you say dl drush dash make or drush? Um, uh, drush make. Oh, okay. Drush make. Drush DL, it's a good question, because if I have a, a Drupal site installed, and I say Drush DL views, then views module will be downloaded in a place. But if I have a, a make file with all the views and CCK and a whole bunch of other modules already specified, I can just say Drush make and the name of the file. And then it will take that file and bring everything down and put it where it's supposed to go. So I, I don't have to even do drash DL, uh, drash download. Is that going to have to get drush make installed first? Yes, yes. That's why, um, you know, the first thing is you have. Now, uh, the only problem with this is that you really have to test the different versions because they come out. Uh, in, uh, I don't know how it is now, but uh, often they'll come out with a new view version and you download it and one isn't compatible with the other or one of the functions. You, you, you have to get a stable version, stick with it, and make changes by, by testing, right? Because sometimes, um, for example, um, Drush Make will generate make file. It will go, it will, you, know, you have your Drupal site with your modules installed, and you say uh, drush make generate, right, and the name of a file, and it will go in and create a make file for you. Now, in one of the upgrades, this was uh, this didn't work anymore. So you have to be careful if, because, after all, we're using it in a serious production environment, but, you know. So just be careful with it. But it's uh, it's 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 amazingly useful. Okay. Um, there's a little problem with it, which is that as you install stuff, you have to update the text file yourself and, um, you know, and maybe it's just simpler to just stick all the modules in the version control system and be done with it. But anyway, that's, you know, a debate. You can either do one or you can do the other. But the, the drush make file uh, has to be used if you wish to uh, install your module on Drupal.org. In other words, uh, an install profile must use Drush Make. Uh, Drush Drupal behind the scenes will use it to generate the tarball that's going to be downloaded. Right? So. And Drush Make is written by Dimitri, right? Right. Dimitri. How old was Dimitri? Well, he's not 12 anymore, is he? <laughs> 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 Dimitri, 
<laughs> we, can only, we can only say that so many years. in high school now. He's in high school. My goodness. So. He's going to the prom? Okay. He's, he's reversing in the uh, Yeah, I think so. Right. So this is a make file. And this make file, what it does, and if, if you download them, um, uh, well, a lot of people use this. This, this make file here specifies Drupal and the version of the API. It then says that the version is 6.2.0, uh, although today will be 6.2.2. Um, it um, specifies uh, that it's a profile installation. Uh, let's just use get, grab this TGZ file from there, and download it. And this, this, this file here is simply another profile, which you will put in profiles, and it's an install profile that we'll read in a moment. Um, which has its own make file, brush make file. Okay. So um, if you go to, uh, P oops. Basically, uh, here it is, you know, all explained, just project PFT. And then you run to answer the question, drush, make, and the name of the actual file. And optionally, you can, you can say which directory you want this to be done in. Okay? Let's do that. You know, um, let's do that so you can actually see it happen. Um, if I go uh, I think I have uh, in the build directory, I've got some make files. So I'm going to say drush make, OK, um, build PFT build make temp um, my site, OK? So it's now, what's it doing? It, it, it executed what we saw a moment ago. And, and what it did is it, it downloaded Drupal, stuck Drupal in the directory, downloaded the profile, uh, which we'll see in a moment, stuck that in, in, in the profile directory, and then executed it. OK? And it's, it's, it's doing all this. Okay, which means that when this is executed, we will then have a, um, a site that we can just install. Okay, and it will have all of the, all of the, the, the stuff we want. Yes, sir. Evans. Yes. <clears throat> you want more time? Uh, no. More than 10? Uh, let me think. Uh, no, we don't really need more than 10 because uh, all of them, I'm going to show where to find everything and, and everybody can, can study it. And, you know, uh, it's not necessary to go over uh, all the code. I just want to show that in, uh, in the temp directory, here's my site. This is a Drupal site which was downloaded. And in the profiles directory, we have the default and we have the PFT. Okay? And in the PFT, we have a bunch of modules which are downloaded. Uh, all of the modules which are specified in the profile uh, make file. And in PFT, um, we have some, some modules also. Uh, here is the pft.make file, which is the Drupal make file, which the original Drupal make file downloaded. Let's just take a really quick look at it. Um, So basically, it just says which which modules uh, it, it you know it's supposed to uh, which modules it's going to do. It also um, allows you to bring down libraries and themes. For example, notice the jQuery here. You can you can download a, a zip file. Uh, it's amazing, you know, but of course this is Drush Make, this is not the installation profile. Okay, this is, so the Drush Make file brought down everything. You have to make this make file. I generated it. I generated, generated it. it. I, I developed the site, 
I use the C tools, bulk export to export everything. And I'm going to show this real quick now. And um, I generated this make file using Drush Main, right? Which is cool because this can be versioned and, and updated without having to, to manually update. Okay. So, uh, and it's uh, Drush Make generate. You know, and it, it actually boop 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 builds this. I think I had to edit a couple of things. It depends you know, which version is used and everything. But basically, it worked pretty well. Um, now, um, let's see here. Let's have a look at the profile. Um, OK, here. The first function of the install profile just simply installs um, all the modules. It mentions all the modules which are to be installed. Now, remember, the Drush Make file has physically downloaded the files. And this profile installation profile, which is executed during the installation process, will enable the file. So if you don't download the files, it won't be able to enable them, obviously. Okay. Um, and the first one on the list has to be install profile API. Okay, you see that? So, just to make a long story short, the install profile API has to be the first one on the list, and the custom ones tend to be, if we have, um, you can see PFT basic, where I've got my con my content types, and and uh, and user interface panels everywhere, uh, actually installs panels everywhere, and a, a sub theme of precision. Um, I, what I've done is I've delegated most of this work not to the install profile but to actual modules and their installation. We're going to have a quick look at that. Um, and here, basically, this doesn't really do much more than what a regular install profile will do. Um, it does, since I'm, I'm going to install organic groups, uh, I had to research how to actually destroy the access and recreate it. So we have uh, delete from node access, a DB query. There was no other way of actually doing it. And then actually calling node access rebuild. That way, when the site, during the installation process, you'll actually see the same message you get when you install organic groups. Right? So, but it's in code. It's everything in code. So uh, it's not a configuration thing. Then just do some stuff that, that the regular install profile does, which is to set some um, properties of the page and story uh, content types. And basically, it doesn't do very much more than that. What I wanted to show you, uh, I just created a page here, created a node. Um, menu rebuild was necessary because I actually you know, changed some, some variables. Um, and I actually install create node, welcome to project flow, which actually creates a page node, and, you know, stuff like that, but doesn't really have very much. Down here is a nice little <coughs> trick. Uh, this function here uh, selects your installation profile instead of uh, install Drupal English. Um, that's, that's um, uh, Open Atrium has that. So I, I got it from Open Atrium and the Funny Monkey. Uh, use it okay and open publish also okay so basically the interesting thing is um, let's go real quick I do want to show you um, what I've done here in the PFT basic module which is a module I, I just wrote you know um, is um, I have an install script Right and the module and in the includes I have all the stuff. Oh God, I have uh, everything. Let's let's have a look at this. Okay, all of the stuff that I exported using bulk export I just stuck into files. So I went to to, to bulk export with C tools and I just created the strong arm for all the variables. When you go to bulk export, it automatically lists for you all of the stuff that you have on your site that's exportable. So I was able to export the views, the business story, 
the issues, project role, user story. Uh, these are the content types, okay, and the views, uh, and all of the variables in Strong Hub, okay. And then I put into the other module the the presentation layer. Yes. These are similar to what features would be doing exactly. in, in many ways. Totally, totally. The only thing is, uh, is I can I can I can divide the modules in any, any way I want. Mm -hmm. Okay. I can also have part of strong arm in one and part of strong arm in another and, and split that up. Okay. Then um, let's just take a look at uh, PFT basic install, which is run once, right? So. The first one is the is the installation right function. Um, I set up the path right, and I I, I set up a bunch of uh, variables, and basically I make an array of content types. And this is what I wanted to show you guys. Install include content copy. What does this do? This takes the content copy module, which is in the contrib directory of the install profile API and we'll actually go ahead and make sure that that code is available to you to be used in the function on the next line. So if you're going to use content copy, you have to kind of declare it first so it actually gets put into memory. Did you mean next line or you meant for the rest of the function? Uh, the, the next line uh, here. So it's just that next line, whatever it calls. Here. It Install is. content copy import from file. This function is in... Uh, content copy. Uh, 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 I understand what you're saying. Uh, yeah, that has to be the next line. Um, right, it's, not, it's, it's, it's loading it for yeah, the rest yes. of the scope of that function. Oh, okay, that's, very good. Thank you very yeah, much for that's okay. it was a, uh, In other words, once you, once you actually say install include such and such a module, it loads it and can be used at any time afterwards in, in the module. Then uh, some other little stuff. Install include user, which is a core uh, module. And, um, you know, you can actually install your roles. It's really cool because it is versionable. This is, why is it worth the effort? Because it's versionable. And, and it's deployable, right? Clean and simple. So you can, you, you can add permissions. You guys can study this later on. Um, strong arm flash caches. <laughs> You know, I always remember that funny site that they had with Drupal or something like that. Did you remember to flush the cache? You know, it's, it's like a joke. You know, but it's like, you know. It's, it's not. It's a true it's joke. Not, <laughs> not a joke when you're just talking. You know, because, you know, and doing all this work and then finding that the strong arm, the variables, I don't want to have to do this and then manually clear the cache. So is there a way of, you know, yes, strong arm flash cache. Because strong arm had to do it too. Okay, good. So then, how you came upon realizing that you needed to do that. You must have ran into a problem where you realized, oh, I need to delete this variable before I get to the next line. Delete a variable where? Yeah, before you flush the cache, you you get a kind of comment that happened by that point. I knew what it did. Um, <laughs> Very ah, yeah. How did that? You know, what was the problem that you ran into? Re excellent, realized? excellent. Yes, absolutely. Um, because it, it would not. Can you repeat the question? Yeah, the the question is, uh, it's a very good question. You'll notice that just before we flash the cache, we actually delete the path auto node pattern variable, and um, the reason is that um, the default node pattern uh, was 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 always honored above and beyond any additional one that was placed for some reason. If, there, if there's something in the database, it's going to use the database for it rather than strong. There you go. So he's deleting it out of the database. So it'll read it from strong. Excellent. Uh, and so what you did is you ran your install profile and discovered that it wasn't honoring your choice. You realized you then needed to override Yes. It. In other words, I was blindly groping around for a clear vision <laughs> that was just expressed. In other words, um, yes, there's no, in features, that would be much more elegant with, with feature revert, right? Feature revert. In other words, if I, if I stick some code into a directory, no, 
doesn't do anything. But if I do a feature revert, I'm saying, forget the database, take the code, okay? And then uh, the, the feature will be taken. And there's no, you know, the, the, the closest thing is this. Uh, it's exactly that way you're saying. It's honor the code and not the database, you know? And the only way is to brute force uh, in this case, okay? Because it should, you know, um, when I flash the cache there with strong arm, it should be enough. But it isn't. So uh, you have to actually uh, delete hey, some of them. Victor, can, you, can you also add in if, if you're familiar with using the diff module with features? Just, uh, yes. The question is yes. About yes. Let's do that right now. Very good. Let, let's do that. Well, uh, let me just show you that because um, uh, okay. Drash feature list. Everything's cool. Uh, we go, I'm sorry, come back. Where are you? Oh, come back. Where are we here? Is this it? This is it. So I'm going to go, um, I'm going to just, um, I'm going to add a, I'm going to change your view again, okay? I'm going to, um, let's see, I'm going to say uh, title, cool, so I've changed the view, so now the version in the database is different, okay, so if I, if I now do here, I say drush uh, feature list again, it says overwritten, so I say drush, um, FD, is that right? One second. Drush grep features. Okay, so we have feature diff, which is the first one, FD. I just thought it maybe it was the lead or something. <laughs> okay, so we say uh, Drush FD and the name of the feature, which is articles. Uh, what did I do wrong here? What? Oh, okay. I have to install the drug. Oh, let's do it. Yeah. Look, look what I'm doing. Drush DL, Drush enabled it. Okay, thank you. Okay. How's that? That's cool. You know, that's that's really nice. You know. Right. <laughs> it's also available through the UI, the features UI. The, 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 yes. Just, there's like a, if you install the dip module, it adds a tab. Okay. Features, Good. So you can find that. Within, now, within really the, quickly, uh, just at the end of my minus ten minutes uh, <laughs> of the minus of the ten minutes, I just want to uh, take a look real quick here. Um, uh, uh, what did I want to look at? Modules, uh, PFT. Okay, so here is interesting because, um, just let's look at the PFT UIP install. Here, um, I actually did the presentation there part. And you can actually, um, in the system API, you can actually install themes. So you can in install enable a theme. You can, uh, I actually installed the precision theme. I want to show you how I use this to install panels everywhere. So, install enable theme, install enable this. Look at this, guys. This installs, this sets the variables for panels everywhere. Which is really cool because it's a lot easier to run this than to do it by hand. Okay? And, uh, okay, then a bunch of other stuff that has to do with the presentation there. Uh, <laughs> Flash roll cache and, and all that. So, okay. So, um, 
I even put a, uh, I changed the default format to the markdown format. Okay, so there's lots of stuff you can do, and it's really cool. I think it's, it may look, it's obviously harder than using features. I mean, features is nicer, you know, it's cool, it's got the diff and stuff like that. But I've got diff, you know, I don't need feature diff, you know. So anyway, it's just an exploration. Today I think I would make a, a, a mixture, I would use features for some of the things in this. Quick question is, once you have sort of this, uh, this install profile used and you deploy, you know, a new site that you've kind of put together, um, how do you go about updating Very good. that particular stuff Very if good. you're not using features? Very good. Um, for the views and for some of these presets and other things, you can actually just um, change it. Um, export it, uh, do a commit, then do a pull, and, and, and it will just work. Okay. Um, for other things, you have to use the update system um, of the module, like it was a, a, like a, you're maintaining a module. Um, the Nouveau people in the bibliography uh, of, of the article that's, that's cited in the, in the slides, uh, that's N-U-V-O-L-E, uh, are a European group that sort of specialize in, in, in this kind of approach. And they use features and they some, uh, use this too. And they have a lot of, they actually do a lot of, um, of uh, mentoring on that and stuff like that. Um, uh, they had one article, they don't really divulge a lot of information, but they did say how they use the update system for, to answer your question. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, there's lots of stuff that we could have gone into and stuff that like, really needs that. A workshop where we actually do it, you know, would be much more interesting. But uh, I hope I've whetted your appetite and, and helped to show what's possible and, and how it is possible to have everything in code and use a God fearing uh, 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 development <laughs> process with Drupal. <laughs> Do uh, stop? Sure, wrote it.